Hey guys, today we're going to be doing port work on the Franke Affinity here for the purposes of doing a three gun speed reload. Um, the Affinity is nice in that the, uh, the serial number way back here, you can't get into it. There's nothing really, no markings for you to get up into like there is on the M2 and especially the Stoger. The Stoger has a serial number right here and uh, it's, it's kind of a pain because you really want to get closer right there than you actually can on the Stoger. On the Benelli, it's back here. That's not such an issue because you don't want to get so deep back there, but you do have to be careful not to go too far and get into it. Um, so on the Affinity, it's more or less just like a, a Benelli or a Stoger. Um, it's more like the Benelli. Um, you do have to worry about where the, uh, the cartridge stop is right here. You can't cut down past that because if you can see in here, I'm not sure if you can see that, but yeah, there's a, you don't want to go past uh, and get into that area. On this side, there's not anything at all to worry about. You can get just about as deep as you like. Um, the other thing you have to consider is if you feel inside of uh, the magazine tube, there's a ridge around it that's almost but not quite a 360 degree ridge. It kind of starts maybe right here and continues on around. And there's a part of it on this side on the uh, on the Franke and the uh, M2 where there is no rim. And uh, if you cut too much of this away, like if you're getting really aggressive right here, you can ruin the receiver. And I think there's like aftermarket magazine tubes that are available for the M2 uh, to resolve that issue, but I doubt there are for the Franke. So uh, you want to be really careful uh, taking away too much material there because you could ruin the receiver of an $800 shotgun. So what I'm going to do, uh, what I've already done actually, let's go over that. Um, I've, I've degreased the receiver pretty well. There's still a little bit of oil in it, but I've gotten most of the grease out just so it won't stick to all the, the fine aluminum dust and chips that I'm going to make. Um, I've removed, obviously, the uh, trigger group, although I have it with me, so I can make some witness marks uh, where I'm going to have the, the limit of my cut back here. Um, I've removed the uh, cartridge stop, or whatever that thing's called, the little button here. I've taken that out. Uh, it's just like the uh, the M2. It's got a roll pin that holds it in. You just drive that right out, and there's a spring underneath it. Looks almost exactly the same. Um, and I've removed, obviously, the uh, the follower and uh, the magazine spring uh, bolt and all that stuff. Just stripped receiver. Got the stock on it still. Don't need to worry about that. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to use some uh, vinyl tape. Uh, kind of sort of a high-vis tape. I don't want to use electrical tape because I can't really see that against the black background, so I've got some uh, red, maybe white, or green, or blue, or some kind of tape. Uh, I'm going to take and mark my do not exceed line, so I'm going to kind of tape up lines that I don't want to go past when I'm cutting. I'm going to use that as a reference for the shape I'm making also, so when I'm, when I'm cutting with the, uh, the high-speed, uh, oh, what's this thing made out of? Uh, carbide, the high-speed carbide uh, cutter. I can kind of figure out the shape that I want to get and I can go off that line but not cut quite to it because I'm going to also want to bevel everything up and, and polish it and that will bring me even closer to that quote unquote do not exceed line. Alright, so I've taped up the receiver. You can see I used some yellow vinyl tape just to kind of mark my line of how I want to cut this. And this is more of a do not exceed line. I'm using that line as a reference when I'm cutting so I can get my shape right and I can, I can consistently cut the right shape. Um, I've filled the receiver with paper towels and I've stuck, stuck the paper towel inside the magazine tube and then wrapped everything else up as best I can, just like Christmas, uh, mostly because you make a lot of fine aluminum dust when you do this and it's best just to kind of preventatively keep it from getting everywhere, even though it kind of will, but the less there is of it, the less you'll have to clean up. tools I'm going to be using today, number one, a multi-speed rotary tool. Uh, most people have a Dremel. I've got this knockoff Black & Decker. Uh, I've had this thing for like probably almost 10 years now and it's served me pretty well. I think it's probably getting to be where it's on its last legs, but I'm going to keep using it until it breaks and I might buy a real Dremel or I might buy another one of these. Um, moving on down the line. Got this, uh, I've got it out of the package. It's a 1 8 inch cylindrical burr from KT Industries. Solid carbide. Um, you really want carbide. It's very important. It will last a lot longer. And here is that little guy. See if I can zoom in a little bit more on this. Got cutting teeth on there. 
And you're basically using this just kind of like you would use a sanding drum. And it works really well. Um, it doesn't foul up as easily as the Dremel version. This is the Dremel branded version of the same kind of thing. And you can see if you look at the teeth, I use this on my M2 and it kind of got filled up with melted aluminum. Uh, it's not optimal. I don't really like the way this cuts. This one on the other hand feels much much better when you're actually cutting. It doesn't chatter quite as much on multiple speeds. You really have to find the, the ideal speed for the Dremel version of this. So that's the first thing I'm going to use to cut. Uh, next, got a whole bunch of stuff over here. I'm going to move to a Dremel sanding drum and I've just got the fine uh, sanding drum on here. There's a coarse version of this as well. Uh, no reason for the coarse. Uh, after I use this, I'm going to use uh, Easy Lock uh, Dremel Attachment Mandrel, I think it's called, and uh, these little kind of sanding or buffing wheels. And I think these are, uh, uh, we've got 320 grit, and what's this other one here? Uh, 180 grit and 280 grit. So we just go progressively from 180 to 280 to 320 uh, to kind of knock that finish down and make it smooth. After that, we'll just use a uh, felt buffing wheel, just a standard uh, uh, Dremel felt buffing wheel. This thing is black because it's I've already used it to polish stuff. They come white. Uh, so if, if you're looking at buying one of these and it doesn't look like this, don't worry, they come white. And I'll also use some buffing compounds. I've got a whole bunch here. Uh, I think we'll be using the white, green, and blue in that order uh, in order to get a high polish on that. Some people, uh, they say not to use uh, uh, polishing compounds and leave it. Um, I, kind of, I like the way it looks. Um, when it is polished, it will stick to your skin, but it will not stick to the shells. Um, and I haven't found it to be an issue when it's, when it's polished of having it stick to my skin at all. Um, there's typically just a little bit of oil on the receiver and that actually helps that from happening. All right, so what I'm going to do here to start out with is I'm actually just going to kind of try to cut flat or maybe tilted slightly inwards, um, but just cut a flat line again using uh, the, the taped yellow line here, my do not exceed line as a reference for how deep I want to go. Um, I'm not going to cut all the way to the line, I'm just going to cut a shape similar to that line uh, and kind of look and feel and see where I'm at, see how I like it, and I'll stop when I'm, when I'm satisfied more or less. It's just a, it's, a, it's a reference and it's a do not exceed line, it's not something I'm trying to cut to. Um, I'm starting off again obviously with the carbide bit. I'm probably going to start on medium speed and just uh, work my way and adjust as necessary. I've got, you just kind of have to feel what the bit is doing. And you want to make sure that when you're cutting, you're not kind of chunking in and out and making a serrated surface. You want to keep that edge. Because once you get that serrated surface, it's going to be hard to get rid of. You're going to have to use files. Um, the sanding drum will not take care of those. It will take care of the minor imperfections, but it's not going to work very well to get rid of a real ridged surface. You want to kind of try as best as possible to cut a nice, smooth, straight line. And I am going to be using uh, eye and uh, lung protection because this dust... When I cut my M2 up, I uh, noticed I was getting aluminum uh, coming out in uh, my snot. That's not good. I knew that's getting places it doesn't belong. So protect yourself.
All right, so I got my first cut done. Uh, like I said, I was just going to try to cut a flat, more or less right here, kind of in the same shape as that line. I think I probably got a little bit too aggressive with my tape because something I didn't really think about was the Franke from the factory already has kind of that flat cut into it, whereas on the Stoger and the Benelli, this line right here just continues on straight, and this right here is already cut down somewhat, so I probably didn't even need to take this line down so much. Um, it's interesting that uh, it's kind of the optical illusion you're just thinking, oh, I need to get this shape, but part of the shape's already there. So that's no big deal. Again, that line's just a reference. I'm just trying to cut that shape. So next step is to flip it around in the vise, do the other side just the same. Okay, so I got my two more or less matching flat cuts on either side here. I can't get quite as aggressive on this side because I've got to worry about getting into this. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to tape up uh, temporarily uh, around here because I'm going to round this out. Uh, it's currently got a square shape. I'm going to just kind of round it up a little bit without getting too much into that material that is uh, uh, stopping the uh, follower from coming with the rounds uh, into the receiver, which is a bad thing. Uh, and then after I'm satisfied with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cut right here, this angle, I'm going to kind of cut that in half, and I'm going to cut through here, do the same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to cut that angle in half again, I'm going to cut a steep angle, and just kind of get these facets. So I have an angle, an angle, an angle, kind of starting to form this bevel uh, forming sort of like a, a magwell almost for your shells to drop in. I'm also going to slightly bevel this outside edge too just to make things look pretty. That doesn't really do anything for you but it does make things look a lot prettier. I'll also be taking away some material up here just kind of continuing this scallop cut up and over this hump that's here and not doing anything for you. So I'm going to go ahead and tape that up. All right, here we are taped. I just kind of got that reference line here of what I want to cut out of this because I'm trying to, instead of having this be flat, I want to have it be curved a little bit uh, just to guide shells in a little bit more and then we're going to bevel everything.
All right, so I finished up the bulk material removal with the uh, carbide bit. It's starting to get dull on me towards the end, that's okay. You notice I already got a booger mark on this receiver. Haven't done that so far, and uh, the bit just kind of caught and walked on me. In a split second, I didn't even have a chance to stop. That really sucks. But we, uh, so we cut those angles, then we kind of halved them and cut another angle, then we just kept adding facets until we've got kind of this almost beveled surface, but if you look, there's still flats there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to use the, uh, the sanding drum, and I think I've also got a somewhere here, these really small angles. I've also got a smaller uh, sanding drum, same grit, uh, but we're just going to get rid of all these tool marks and uh, bevel it a little bit more, all these little facets. Hopefully we're going to get rid of all of those and make everything pretty smooth. And then after that, we can kind of start polishing the metal uh, using the abrasive buffs right here. Alright, so I just finished with the sanding drum, got rid of all the tool marks. Uh, you can see just kind of the rough way that the sanding drum cuts it, but mostly just smoothed everything out, um, got rid of any kind of high spots that I could feel, and just used, used my fingers more than my eyes to tell me uh, what, what to do with it, because with the kind of dull surface it's kind of hard to, some of it hides from you, you can't really see the bumps that are in there as much. So, once we're done with that, uh, we're going to move on to the buffs which are uh, the sanding buffs, sorry, or abrasive buffs, which are these guys here, uh, starting with the coarsest grit, which is this one, and the medium, and the fine. And after those, we're going to do uh, our new polishing. All right, so we got finished with the buffs. Uh, as you can see, uh, just finishing with this last buff, which I believe is rated the 320 grit from Dremel. Uh, it's already got kind of a polish to it, kind of a dull luster. Uh, we're going to take it a step further than that. We're going to we're going to start using the polishing compounds now with the uh, uh, felt buffing wheel. Get these guys out. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, white, green, blue with the uh, felt polishing wheel. Alright, starting off with white rouge. Alrighty, got a new felt buffing wheel on there. That's what they look like when they're new. Alright, gonna switch to green stainless now. I'm right, going to finish up with blue all purpose. All 
All right, here is the uh, mostly finished product. I uh, got a nice high polish on it. If you look close, you can kind of see here where my bit started to go on me, and I I got a lot of chatter, and I couldn't get that smoothed out. But that's all right because once you get it, you know, sanded and polished, it's actually it feels smooth to the touch, but it doesn't look smooth once you get that mirror polish on there. And you can also see my booger mark. But hey, guess what? This is a three-gun shotgun. It's gonna get thrown in barrels. Nobody cares. So the main thing is this isn't going to hurt your thumb. So when you're going, if you want to do uh, twins or quad loads or whatever, uh, this cut will work for that. You could get a bit more aggressive. Um, I've still got a little bit of material actually all the way around uh, that's going to be retaining that follower. So I didn't even get rid of that ridge at the top there. I got real close, but I didn't quite get there. Um, but this, this is going to really easily facilitate uh, doing quad loads and twin loads. But uh, for now, it'll just be used to load from standard caddies. And remember, you can always remove more material later. You can't put more material back. I wish I could put this material back. Um, so this is going to be another one of the videos in this series. We've got more things we're doing to the shotgun. We're, uh, we're modifying the, uh, uh, the bolt release. We're adding an oversized bolt release. We're going to do the uh, oversized bolt handle, oversized safety, um, do the mag tube extension and uh, the port work obviously and we're going to install a uh, uh, welded and extended carrier actually a Terran tactical uh, carrier it's just like that from the factory uh, if you like my videos please subscribe uh, thank you for watching